Chulalongkorn University's Faculty of Science is developing a sweat-based coronavirus detector. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'm just gonna go like this. We're all 15 minutes. 15 minutes. I'm Michael New, and this is Thailand Today. We're here at Dula University's Faculty of Science to take a look at a brand new device that can test for COVID-19 based on the odor found in sweat. This is based around the concept that those who are infected with COVID-19 secrete a unique odor. But how effective is this device, and how does it work? To find out more, we're here at Dula Longkorn University's Faculty of Science to speak to Department of Chemistry's assistant professor, Dr. Chadin Gulasing, who is behind this unique innovation. Sorikat, thank you so much for letting us interview you today. Uh, this is quite an interesting invention that you're working on. How exactly are you able to test for COVID-19 through sweat? Mm, actually, we got the, the thing called a detector that uh, kind of the machine sensing the presence of the volatile compounds in the air or in the, the sample you inject into the machine. And that one is just for the, any kind of things come touching the detector, it gives you the signal. Right? And the idea is like, uh, if you believe that uh, uh, the COVID infection people may have some specific volatile compounds, right? Let's say you, are, you have about 100 compounds in your sweat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe you have a few of them being the markers for the uh, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, according to this fact, and then we develop some kind of filter to filter out the other compound out, and then leaving only the target markers go touching the detector, and then this gives you the signal. Uh, so is it based on the smell of the sample or is it based on the actual liquid of the mm, sample? The, the characteristic smell yeah, inside the, the liquid ah, sample. I see, so it's, it's based purely on smell, which makes it very different to the swab test where you'd actually have to go in and either get a saliva swab or a... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Collect the sweat like uh, throughout the body, maybe different part, like the armpit or the feet. Uh, what gave you the idea to develop this concept? I think initially it is the project of the, uh, the veterinary Chulalongkorn University oh, okay. and the Chevron company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they developed some kind of approach to detect the COVID, like a screening with the dog, yeah, the, the sniffer dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the dog oh, that's right. I'd heard about that. Yeah. So they actually used sniffer dogs to search out people who had COVID. Yeah. Uh, at the first, at the beginning, I just want to go there and then provide some answer for them. What kind of smell that the dog actually sniff? Mm. Yeah, and we, we, we have been planned in, uh, before that uh, we will end up with this kind of machine device. But uh, we, we study from the, the dog case and then we got some knowledge. And from that knowledge, we develop further into this machine. Yeah. How successful were these dogs at identifying people who had COVID and how does your machine compare? Yeah, the accuracy for the dog, it's just uh, around 95%. 95. 95. Yeah. This means you kind of screen for 100 people, you give the correct answer for 95 of them. Yeah, and for the machine, it, it is quite similar anyway. But the, the reason we develop the machine is like a, whenever the dog like feeling hungry or want to go to the right. toilet somehow. And if we have the machine, we could continue working and then we could kind of validate each other also. Uh, how does this compare to the uh, efficacy of other, or of other machines or of other types of tests that in, in we're currently using for COVID? Right? Yeah, so uh, for example, the swab test, um, what, what percent success rate does that have? Uh, I think at the beginning for the PCR, it's close to 100 gold standard. And then we have the kind of antigen test kit. Yeah, that one could be 95. Wow. So it's, it's actually very similar to uh, the current methods that we're using to test. I think our, uh, our group of the study, the number of people, investigated people is not quite large at the moment. 
yeah, we, we got about uh, 7,000 people at the moment in, in Bangkok only. Yeah, this means that uh, may, may not be, the antigen test kit may not be replaced by ours. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, it's maybe it kind of help for yeah. the screening. Well, it is a very exciting technology, and uh, um, not only could it be applicable, I think, for people who have problems with their nose, um, it could also help for people who are afraid of getting a nasal swab or afraid of getting a blood test. This is a, a non-intrusive option for them. And obviously, very early in the technology, uh, it will be very exciting to see how far you can take this in the future. What challenges did you have in developing this new technology? Yeah, as I told you at the beginning that uh, we haven't planned for this machine at the beginning. Mm. Yeah, this means we just keep noticing something. We, we observe something and then we collect the data. Yeah, this just come little by little until we get some uh, kind of, we confirm something that uh, there should be some particular type of compound. In our case, it's based on the aromatic type of the compounds. Yeah, and then I think after knowing that compound, we just search for the detector, the online detector, and then we came up with uh, our device. Yeah, it takes about a few months after studying the sample with the dog sniffer project. Uh, so quick question, uh, how much more financial support do you need in order to take this to the next step? I see. I think we are in the stage of the applicable at the moment, like uh, in the uh, cities or in the schools, for example, for, for the student who could not stand the swapping pain, right? Uh, I think I think we are quite ready to go out. Yeah, for the if we don't have any more grant at the moment, we could just use a few machines we got. We just go for the different places, and then we apply. Like at the moment, we are screened for the COVID testing for the researchers in Faculty of Science. Yeah, and some industrial company asked us to go there and then screen for the COVID also. For example, tomorrow, some company calling me to go out, and then I just go there. Yeah. Uh, with the capability of the machine we got, maybe a 500 cases a day, I think. Okay, on one per, machine, per one is machine. able to test. Yeah, if we get the more grants, we can just buy more machine and produce more, and then this kind of multiply yeah, the number of. Well, after talking about the machine for a while, I'd love to see the actual machine. However, first, we'll have to take a quick break. Don't go away, because we will be back with more of Thailand today. NBT World, a vision of Thailand. Welcome back to Thailand Today. We're here with Isaya Tawi Seng, Sekun Thai, one of the lead researchers working on this device that will test for COVID-19 in odor. Uh, I, should, I feel I should ask first if this device actually has a name. Ah, okay. So it's called the Honeywell Ultra Ray 3000 Plus. 3000 Plus? What is the plus from? There are many types of this outer array, but this one specific used um, to selective of kind of the filter. Mm -hmm. So that's why. Well, uh, walk me through it. How exactly does this work? Oh, okay, so start from this Honeywell Auto Ray 3000 Plus. So this is the specific um, detector. It's called the PID. So its full name is Photo Ionization Detector. And this contains uh, one of the filter that we specifically use for the COVID-19 specific odor that secrete from the infected people. Yeah. And then um, this PID detector will connect through this device. This device means the overall system in order to control the vaporize of the gas from the COVID-19 infected odor. Yeah, and after that, it will control overall system, and this will pro produce the 
number here. So if the if people infected with the COVID-19, will pop up with the number mm, here. Okay. Yeah, but if they are safe, so it will come up with 0, 0.0. 0. How do you actually collect the odor sample? Okay, so we'll start with this kind of test kit. Mm -hmm. Contain two, two, two of the cotton swab right here. So you need to put two of each one of the cotton rods onto your armpit, under your armpit. armpit. And each of them need 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And after that, you collect two of the cotton rods into right here. And you will leave around two minutes in order to make the equilibrate gas inside the bottle. After that, you need to use the UV in order to kill the surface here. Mm -hmm. And that's it. After that, you can collect the gas and inject into this overall system. Mm -hmm. So you may try this one. Okay, well, let's, let's try it. Put that down. You need each of the cotton. Uh, one on each underarm. Okay. Okay. Let's put these here. Okay. Hide this away. Okay. Goes one of them. And then. Okay. So uh, I'm just gonna go like this. Around 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Well, in that time, um, can you tell me a bit more about how this works specifically? Okay, so you mean the way we use this system, right? Yep. Okay, so at first, so after you collect overall the sample, and then you need to use this kind of siring mm. in order to um, collect the gases from your own, your own armpit sweat. And then after that, you will inject your own gas into this and then press down the gas and use this button in uh, order to it, swap it the okay. yeah, switch. And then this will measure the gas. And, it, and if it come up with 0, 0, which means you are safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's qu it's quite simple, and the whole process takes about 10-15 minutes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because of the collect sample. Uh, so these samples, um, are there any other are there any other parts of my body that I could be putting these cotton swabs, and you'd still get a similar result? <laughs> yeah, but that would not be okay. I mean, there are many convenience way. I think mm -hmm. you can use the um, kind of the in order to absorb your own oily, oily face, I don't know how it's called. And then you swap for two minutes on your forehead, mm -hmm. and then you can collect the gas as well okay. and inject. So this would take around two minutes, and that's all. Okay, so you could do it on your forehead. Uh, would it work with saliva as well, or that's a, that's a completely different thing? I, I think it's different things, yeah, because we need to use the scent from the kind of the armpit and all over the forehead because... So it's purely sweat, uh, it doesn't work as well with saliva? Saliva is work, but it's contained while that, so we, we didn't use that kind of... So, so possibly one strategy for testing could, have, could be that everybody who's in line stands outside where it's really hot, so they just come in and you can swab them really quickly. It's just not as comfortable for people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> only two minutes and then finish. That's all. Okay, well, thank you so much for, for walking me through this. It is a really exciting piece of technology. And certainly, I must say, while it is kind of funny and awkward for me to be standing here with these things in my underarm, it is way more convenient than sticking a swab up my nose. So that's great. Thank you. <laughs> While we're waiting for the cotton swabs in my armpits to get sufficiently stinky for the machine, uh, we're joined again by Assistant Professor Dr. Chadin Kula Singh from Tulalongkorn University and Mr. Le Chai Thum Ratanakun, Security Manager of Chevron Thailand Exploration and Production. So, gentlemen, while I have you here, uh, may I ask how expensive this machine is? Actually, the, uh, the heart of this machine is this the gas nicers. The Honeywell. Yeah, Honeywell. Oh. Yeah, this, this type, this brand actually is quite expensive. It's about 210,000 baht itself. 
but this part uh, actually this, uh, we did this on our own so it cost about 10 20000 baht so overall we, this is a prototype okay right. so we're looking at 230000 baht in order to, uh, to 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 make this machine work okay and uh, in the future we have to look at the uh, application and implication as well we uh, now we're looking to uh, reduce the cost of the whole thing particularly this machine to knock it out to about uh, 50,000 baht so I think with that range I think we can make this work for public so it can be accessible and reachable by schools or companies so that's, that's the more part figure we're looking at yeah, I mean, obviously, one of the, the challenges that this machine has is that it's not something that you can easily develop as a home test kit, but rather it's something that you can take and test a lot of people. Uh, how many people can be tested by this machine in one day? It's about 500 at the moment. Mm -hmm. And that's assuming that people could just have these cotton swabs at their own time, but then come and, and it's just the time to cycle through each test in the machine. Do you have to uh, clean out the machine after each use? Yeah, we got something called the positive and negative control to inject to test the machine. Ah, okay. yeah. Whenever we inject the positive control, after injection, you should have some number on it. And then with the negative control, after injection, without signal. Yeah, if we test this one and then nothing wrong, we keep going. In every maybe 10 or 20 cases, we test the control one time. Ah, and what are your plans for this going forward? Uh, as I said earlier that we, we're looking at opportunities to use this in reality, right? Even though the uh, COVID-19 spread seems to uh, subside right now, but I think we have to live with it for a while from now yeah. on. So for us as a company, we have our plan to use this at our offshore facilities. Okay, so that I think we just have to uh, adapt more to be, make it usable. And I think is we have to train the person who can test this one uh, in in uh, in multiple numbers. All right. So this is for our part. For the public part, I think we also have another uh, uh, organization that it, that is interested in um, enhancing this uh, machine and make it cheaper, so it can be used. Uh, nationwide or we can right. share this with others so we're looking at uh, right now 50,000 machines you know, by next year so that's so we have two two ways of doing it right now uh, are there any plans to be able to modify this to test for other uh, odors as well yeah actually it depends on the material we use for as the filter yeah mm -hmm. yep. and if we change the material we change the specific odor we could detect this means uh, we could adjust this one to match with several diseases, such as uh, diabetes, Alzheimer, really? cancer in the, some stage. Alzheimer's is something that you can test odor for. Yeah, the idea is just like, uh, yeah. even depression you could observe oh, that's that. that's true. I mean, emotional. dogs do smell depression as well. You secrete certain chemicals. Oh, that's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. So it, it, this, this is cool to me because it means that this machine that you've got uh, can be very easily modified. I mean, you only have to change out the, the filter and probably some of the programming, right, to be able to test for a variety of different things. Certainly, in the future, this could be a really interesting avenue to explore in terms of where you can take it. Well, speaking of tests, I think my 15 minutes are up. So I suppose let's, uh, let's take out my, um, my cotton swabs in the turn. Okay, I got one. Yeah. Put that in here, and then, and then you close the lid for a while. There. Close that lid. Okay. Okay. There we are. And then we let the gas inside equilibrate for a while, mm -hmm. maybe a, a minute, something like that. And then we take. You could do it yourself anyway. This machine is just the job. It's just for you to do it yourself. Well, luckily, I have you guys here to walk me through it, so I, I don't I don't break anything. <laughs> yes, you are. Uh, then you just use this one, right? So use one. Okay. Take the, only the case mm -hmm. from the bottle inside. So, so I can unscrew it now. Yeah, yeah, sure. Should be fine now.
Yeah. Now you got some kind of water ties inside here. Yeah. Yeah. After that, you connect this thing. This one. Yeah. Okay, that's connected. And, yeah. The next step is like uh, pressing this one. Yep. Yeah. You, you don't need to be fast or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can try like release the. the sorry. Yeah. You uh -huh. see the back pressure. Okay. Right? Yeah. There's yeah. back. This means the gas is still inside here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just no worry about that. Yeah. And the job for this button is just to release this one to into the detector. Okay. Yeah, it's just fully. Let's, yeah. Let's push this in a bit. Yeah, don't need to be so hard now. And then just press the button. Uh, just. Move out, move out your finger. Yep. Ah, uh, okay. There we go. So the pressure is gone in. Yeah. This means, and then you have a look at this signal. Zero point zero zero all the time. This means you are negative. Oh, that's that's very no, that's no extremely reason. quick. So that's so that just tested already. Yeah. That quick. Wow. Also, no dog had to smell my armpits too. So I feel like there's an added benefit there. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I I think overall. Uh, if you're doing the, the nasal swab test, you have to sit and wait for, for at least 10 to 15 minutes as well to see any kind of result. So the speed of this is very comparable, except I don't have to stick anything up my nose. That's, that's the beauty of it. You can, do, you can do it every day, right, compared to swapping. It doesn't get hurt and uh, it's much cheaper there. Yeah, and all it, all it requires is just, um, I suppose, a vial and cotton swabs. And that's in the future, that's a way we're looking at the way to reduce the cost and the time yeah. as well. And now, conceivably, could you do this with, say, like a really cheap plastic vial and cotton swabs as well? Yeah. So you could have this, this cost be next to minimal. Yeah, mm -hmm. a yeah a few, just a few baht each and, time. And uh, also, we try to uh, transmit the uh, data from Nipshin to either laptop, you can read it, or send it to uh, SMS. Yeah. On your uh, mobile. So you've oh. actually got a. So you actually have uh, proof that you've tested negative, which is also a really yep. good idea. We yeah. send the result to the uh, the people who. Oh, who excellent! The so I'll have, I'll have a little email or something. That's okay. a future plan. All right. Can I keep this as a souvenir? Okay. Uh, what other projects are you working on at the moment that you'd like to share? Yeah, about me, it's just about the machine instrument development, about the volatile compounds analysis how we analyze the 1,000 compounds within one, one hour, something like that. And after we get the important compound for different kind of application, we could have something called a marker compounds, right? And then we search for the detector, like the COVID in this case. After we find the marker compounds within 100 compounds in the sweat, we could find some specific detector and then go in field, yeah, and for the testing for people around it's kind of the pattern that we I am doing at the moment. Well, that's that's quite exciting, and hopefully, uh, if that develops further, I'd love to come back, and then you can walk me through that one too. Sure. Um, unfortunately, we've now run out of time, but thank you so much to both of you, uh, Assistant Professor Dr. Chadin Kula Singh of Tula's Faculty of Science, and Mr. Le Chai Chum Ratanakun, Security Manager of Chevron Thailand Exploration and Production for talking to us about this amazing innovation, the sweat-based COVID-19 detector. That's it for our show today, but we broadcast every Saturday at 9.30 p.m. on NBT World and NBT2 HD, as well as live on our YouTube NBT World channel. Don't forget to like and comment on our Facebook page, Thailand Today Online. I'm Michael New. Sorry,